Musings, an observation. Psalm 23 verse 1 says this, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. David wrote that. Ecclesiastes 2 verses 9 through 11 say this, So I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remained with me, and whatsoever mine eyes desired I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my portion of all my labor. Then I looked at all the works that my hands had wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do, and behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. David's son Solomon wrote that. Today's verses show a difference between David, the second king of Israel, and his son and successor, Solomon. For much of his youth, David was a common shepherd boy, familiar with the smell of sheep and the sweat of toil. Yet David had a closeness with the Lord that few of us enjoy. He had such a passion for God that even despite his failings, and some of them were rather severe, the Lord called him, a man after mine own heart, Acts 13, 22. Compare that to David's son, Solomon. He was raised in a palace of luxury, probably engaging in very little of what we might call menial labor. And he was eventually blessed with great wisdom. And although Solomon had a genuine relationship with God, his dissatisfaction in life prompted him to chase after pleasure and knowledge but sadly, they left him emotionally drained and unsatisfied. Vanity, he said. All is vanity. Ecclesiastes 1, 2, 2, 17, and many other verses. I'm not sure what to do with the comparison except to conclude that a person can have a lot of stuff and still not be happy. In his thoughts on our possessions, our treasures, Rick Bush pointed out that the things that we own are not really ours. It all belongs to God, and we are just stewards for Him. Furthermore, he said, being rich is not a sin, but it is an opportunity. Again, although David certainly had his faults, in general, the Lord was the center of his life, and his possessions were peripheral. Sadly, for Solomon, his treasures and pleasures seemed to be at the forefront of his life, and it was God who was pushed to the sidelines. I think there's a lesson in there somewhere.